Hey guys, and hello YouTube, hello everybody that's watching, and welcome back to one of our episodes in creating uh, our 2D side-scrolling Unreal Engine 4. Uh, apologies for the late videos, um, it's slightly out of my control. Uh, obviously this week we've been off on school holidays and uh, the wife has asked me to help decorate the house and things, which has sort of slowed down on, on video production. Uh, but that's sort of coming to an end now, so hopefully I'll be able to put out a video uh, pretty much every day now, uh, hoping that there will be no more uh, problems along our journey. Um, in anything that we, we do in, in regards to our video clips. So, we have got pretty far in the series. Uh, we're now coming up to the part where we're going to start adding some AI, so we're going to start putting some enemies in, uh, we're going to start putting some, some traps and, and stuff into our levels. Uh, which means we might need to get some more sprite sheets. We don't have to, we can make some if we like. Uh, that's not a problem, we could do that. Uh, actually, I might do that myself. I might um, just make some very simplistic... Mm, uh, I could probably put them in the description if, if you really want them, but uh, they'll be very simplistic objects. I mean, you can make your own, you could download them if you like, that's fine. Um, it doesn't really matter anyways. It, it's entirely up to you what you do in these, these episodes. But what we're going to do in our first episode is, this is going to be part one of adding bad things, as you can see, the bad things. Uh, this is going to be all about adding things that are on the floor. Uh, so it could be things like spikes and etc. So we'll just do a very simple spike system for this one um, and then our next part will be adding our character into our scene so we'll be adding characters and etc um, into our I mean yeah we're gonna start adding bad characters and stuff like that and adding damage to him and etc in regards to you know, just a damage system in general so without further ado let's get started and let's get straight into the video so what I have already got open for you is Photoshop because we're going to quickly make uh, some spikes for the game itself. Again, uh, you can download them if you like. Uh, it's just easier for me if I just quickly make them instead of trolling the internet uh, to find some some spikes. So I'm just going to quickly uh, throw a very basic sp uh, sprite sheet together um, of some very dangerous spikes that we might have. Uh, I think they are already out, but hey, oh, it doesn't really matter right now because this is just a sample. Oh, they should not be there. I uh, did say, hey, ho, um, doesn't matter, but um, it does really. So let's actually just move that along. So let's move them there. And they'll do. Uh, so let's just fill those in. Maybe with a grayish color, so at least we can see that they are the spiky bits. Oh, dear. And let's just erase these bits out here. Like that. So this is very quick. Apologies. You can skip along the video clip if you like, if you want to just get straight into the blueprints and etc. But we need to make something that would do some type of damage to our character. So I'm just going to save this. Go file, save as. Remember, anything that we do with um, with our objects or anything that we're working with, um, always make sure that you save them as a PNG. So obviously that gets the transparency. But if you want to redo the image again, just resave as a PSD if you're using Photoshop. So I'm going to save as a PNG. Uh, as you can see, our hearts and pumpkins are there. So I'm just going to call this one, not sprites, that's a bit silly. Uh, we'll call it spikes because it is just spikes. Very simple spikes, but hey, it doesn't really matter. So as you can see, our scene's pretty much um, up to par. Uh, we've got to the point where um, our character has now got all different styles of animation. Um, he's not shooting for some strange reason. I'll find out why that is later on. Um, maybe I didn't save or something after our last project, but that's not much of an issue for this series anyways. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create the spike damage system uh, for our character itself, and it's very straightforward. Um, it's pretty much making, again, another blueprint actor that we're going to put into our scene, uh, but we're just going to set up a blueprint um, to go into our damage system of our character. And it's it's very, very easy. Um, it's not hard at all. So we're going to go, make sure you're in your blueprints folder, right click, and you're going to go blueprint class and make sure it's an actor. I'm going to call this BP underscore spikes. Makes sense if we just call it spikes. Um, and I haven't imported my sprites, so it's a good idea if I do do that. <coughs> so we'll just import that tile. Um, so all my stuff is saved. It's a good question. Where is all my stuff saved to stuff? Unreal, projects, YouTube, source files, tiles, and spikes. There they are. Okay, I remember apply paper 2D and then create this into a sprite. Uh, you, this is pretty straightforward. We've done this many, many times, so I'm just going to fly through that bit. Okay, so in our blueprint of our sprites, it's very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to get our components of the spike itself. So if we type in sprite, we'll be able to get our paper sprite. And 
the source that we want is going to be our spikes. We can actually search for it. So spikes. Spike. Is that what I called it? That's it. So spike. And as you can see, that comes default onto the scene. And we can drag that into our route. Pretty straightforward. I mean, we couldn't get any easier than that in regards to how we wanted to bring that into our, uh, pretty much our scene, really. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it couldn't get any, any easier than that. So our next step, what we need to do is we need to add onto our system of how this damage is actually going to work. Okay. And it's very, very simple that we need to add a collision onto this section here. So if we add um, collision, okay, so collision, and what we're going to get is a box collision, all right? It's going to be a box collision. And we'll just shrink that down. Right, so actually, let's make this. Okay, so we're just going to fit that in. Make sure it fits in onto our, our spikes. We don't need to change that one, to be honest. So we'll just shrink that down and fit that in to our spikes there. Just like that. I think that's a bit too high, to be honest. Let's uh, shrink that down just a bit more. Because really, you only want to do damage on the spikes itself. Um, so if we have a look, slow this down a bit. Slow that down. As you can see it's not really touching the spikes. I mean, you can really, really mess with this if you want to get it really well done. Uh, I'm just doing this really quickly in purpose of a, of a video clip. But as you can see, it just takes a bit of tinkering. I mean, you could put separate collision boxes on each one if you wanted to. Um, that's fine as well. You could do that. Okay, um, that, no, that's not right. Let's make that a bit bigger. Okay, that looks like it will be okay for me for now. Okay, just, again, this is for purpose of the video. This, uh, I mean, you can spend a lot more time um, working on this in your own time. So, let's compile and save that. And what we're going to do is we're going to head into our event graph. Now, we've got all this event, begin play, overlaps, and etc. We're going to delete every single one of those out because we don't need them. But what we do need is we need our box and we need to make sure when the component gets overlapped. So if you just press the plus, that will come directly into our scene itself. Now, what we need to do is we need to tell it um, to send damage towards our character. Now, if you remember correctly, we actually set this up. Remember, that was that damage system that we set up many, many moons ago, okay? But to access that, we need to cast to our character. Now, we've done this many times. So we're going to drag off this node. I'm going to say cast to 2D side scroller character. Okay, so we're just going to cast to our character. The other actor, we're just going to drag as the object. Um, so basically, it's going to just know that that's going to be linking to each other on that system there. Okay. And what we need to have is we need to grab the damage system of the 2D side scroller character. So let's drag that across and we're going to type in damage system. There it is there. So there's our damage system that we created. Remember, that was our custom event. And what we need to do is we need to tell this spikes how much damage we're going to give to the character. Okay. Now, currently that's set to zero. You could put your own values in. Now, remember, this is a float. So if you put one, that's going to kill him straight off. And um, that's going to take all his HP off. Well, we, we don't really want to do that. Okay, so we might want to make it to maybe 0 0.2. We could do it like that. And that's how much damage would be then inflicted onto the character. Okay, so we compile. Oh, sorry, I forgot to connect those two nodes up. So compile and save. Now, every time the character will hit this box uh, or the spikes itself, it will apply that much damage to the character. So let's test this out. So let's save. Let's close that down for now. Okay, so that's our spikes. Now, if I had to drag that on, okay, so just drag the spikes onto the scene and play. Let's remove these pumpkins because they're also going to do damage. So let's just remove anything that's going to cause me a problem. So if I hit play now and hit the spikes, very good looking spikes, might I add. If I hit them, see the damage goes down on the system. Uh, so you can see my HP did drop. If I hit it again, it then goes down some more. Now, the only problem that we have here is that the character, right, can keep hitting that object and etc. But what we are going to look at is we're going to create a variable inside the character blueprint that will maybe if he hits something like this, it will knock him back a bit. Um, so 
it'll look like he has taken some type of damage. Or we can change his state, so what he might look like. Uh, I mean, the world's our oyster pretty much in regards to what we're working with here. Okay. So let's have a look what this looks like in perspective. So if we have a quick look at where our hitboxes are. So yeah, you can see that it's it's traveled along the sides here. You could actually move that so it'll fit onto the floor. So you can actually fit it quite nicely if you wanted to, like that. Uh, so if you wanted to get it directly on the floor, that's probably going to be your best option. As you can see we still take the damage. Um, and nothing else will occur because... Well, I don't know why that's happening, to be honest. Really, he should die. Uh, but we'll have a we'll, we'll fix that issue. I don't know if I I might mess something up when I was saving other things and etc. But that's pretty much how you would work that system. So if we had a look, let's go back into the spikes and let's just drag off the damage system and let's just say print string and we're just gonna print off. You hit the spikes, so we can just see that we're hitting the spikes just so you can see it visually um, on the left hand side. So you can see it says you hit the spike, you hit the spikes, and I can carry on hitting the spikes. And then obviously my number of lives are not dropping to zero. I'm slightly unsure of why this is. Let's just see what happens if I hit the boxes instead. Oh, that's a bit strange how all that damage takes place. Anyways, we'll have a look at that and, and why that's happening. I think it's because the value amount is, is not ticking below the, the, the amount that we want. Oh, did we say in our values that... Hold on, let's have a look. Might as well. Got a bit of time in the video clip. So let's go into our character. Let's have a look inside our character. So our damage system... Yeah, okay. So this is basically saying if it is equal to um, zero, then obviously that will happen. Let's link both of them up. So if it's equal or less than zero, then it should then end the game. So... Oh, that's still... don't know why that's happening. It's a bit odd. So we're saying if it's less than char health, blah, 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 blah. If it's less than, oh, dope. We need to also touch that one. That makes sense. I'll save and play. There we go. Okay, so now that is working, that whole system. Because basically what was happening is that his health was not hitting zero exactly. Um, it was actually dropping, it was just skipping the zero step. So all I did was attach the, um, on our damage system, just link these two together. So we can have anything that's equal or less than zero and we'll still do all this animation set here. Okay. So that's pretty much it for that session where it was just creating a very simple um, spike um, in our system. And what happened is with that spike is once you stood on it, um, it took the amount of damage that we, we gave it. So in, the, in that example, it was 0.2. I mean, you could change it to whatever you liked. And obviously we just had to fix our system a little bit uh, where we had to... Um, find out uh, pretty much our damage system to make sure that it was equal to or less than zero. Um, so we had to just uh, link up those nodes um, into the right nodes to make them die correctly. Okay. Again, thank you very much for joining me in this session. In our next session, we'll, we'll, we will add our enemy in. Uh, we will give him health and etc. We'll put um, a little health number on his head. It's going to be quite an interesting session in our next one. Um, it will follow the same pretty much idea of what we've done with the spikes. Uh, but obviously enemies are a little bit different because they do shoot back at you. <laughs> um, so it is just a little bit different, but don't forget it's all still with blueprints. So it's not um, as difficult as it seems. Again, thank you very much for joining me. My name is Wayne. It was nice taking for the session. I'll see you in our next one. And please, if you don't mind, like, subscribe and share with all your friends. That would be great. Give us a follow on Twitter as well. Um, I'm still trying to understand how to use that. Again, thank you very much. Goodbye.